Have you ever wondered how our modern world works? How your phone, your computer, and the internet seem to know exactly what you want? They all follow a secret set of instructions, a hidden language that controls almost everything we do online. We call it the algorithm. You might think this idea is new, that it was invented recently in a place like Silicon Valley, but that story isn't true. The most powerful word in technology isn't a thing. It's the name of a person, a man who lived over 1,200 years ago. His name was Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khwarizmi. He worked in the great city of Baghdad and wrote the original recipe that all our modern computers follow. This is the hidden story of the man who created the blueprint for our digital world. Tonight, we're going to open the file on the most important person you've never properly met. To understand how important Al-Khwarizmi's work was, we first have to see the world before him. Let's imagine we travel back in time to the 9th century. Our first stop is Europe. In places we now call England or France, life was very hard. Great empires had fallen, and a lot of knowledge had been lost. Learning was difficult, and most people were focused on surviving. Even something as simple as counting was a big problem. They didn't use the numbers we use today. They were stuck with Roman numerals, letters like I, V, and X. Imagine you're a builder trying to construct a large church. You need 2,750 blocks of stone. In Roman numerals, that's MMDCCL. Now, what if you need to triple that order? How do you multiply MMDCCL by three ion paper? There was no easy way. You had to use a special counting board called an abacus. It was slow, and if you made one mistake, you had to start all over. Because math was so hard, it was difficult to build big things, to trade goods, or for a king to manage his kingdom. The world was stuck. But now, let's fly east to a very different place, a city full of light and learning, Baghdad, in the country we now call Iraq. This was the capital of the powerful Abbasid Caliphate and the center of the Islamic Golden Age. The rulers here, the caliphs, were not just interested in power and wealth, they were deeply interested in knowledge. Great caliphs like Harun al-Rashid and his son al-Mamun believed that their faith, Islam, encouraged them to learn about the world. They felt that studying science and math was a way to understand God's creation. So the caliph al-Mamun started an amazing project. He built the House of Wisdom. This wasn't just a library, it was the best university and science center in the entire world. Al-Mamun, the caliph, said to his helpers, Go to every corner of the earth, find every important book you can, bring the knowledge of the Greeks, the Persians, and the Indians back to Baghdad. We will not just copy these books, we will study them, find any mistakes, and use them to build new knowledge. And so, the smartest people from all over the world came to Baghdad. Into this amazing place came our hero, Muhammad ibn Musa al-Khwarizmi. He was born around the year 780 AD in a region called Khwarizm, which is now the country of Uzbekistan. He was a brilliant Persian scholar who was given a special job at the House of Wisdom. He wasn't just there to read old books, he was there to solve the big problems that were holding the world back. Al-Khwarizmi's first big challenge was the problem of numbers. He knew that the clumsy Roman numerals were like a cage for new ideas. The answer came from books that traveled all the way from India. For centuries, Indian mathematicians had been using a far better system. It relied on just 10 simple symbols, numbers one through nine. But their greatest invention was a symbol for nothing at all, a simple circle, the zero. The zero was the secret key. It allowed for something called the decimal place value system. This just means that the spot where you put a number changes its value. A five in the first spot is just five. But if you put that same five in the second spot and use a zero to hold the first spot, it becomes 50. If you put it in the third spot, it becomes 500. The zero let just 10 symbols show any number you could imagine. al knew this was the breakthrough the world needed. He wrote a book to explain how to use these new Hindu Arabic numbers to do math easily. His book was so famous that when people in Europe learned about this new method, they named it after him. His name, al khwarizmi turned into the word algorithm. It simply meant the method of al khwarizmi But al khwarizmi was not finished. He then looked at the real-life puzzles people had to solve every day. In the Islamic empire, there were clear rules for how to divide property when someone passed away. 
these inheritance puzzles could be very complicated. There were also problems in trade and in building. All these puzzles had one thing in common. You had to find a missing number, an unknown value. Al Khorizmi wanted to create one single recipe that could solve all these puzzles. So, around the year 830 AD, he wrote his most important book. Its title in Arabic included the words Al-Jabr wal-Muqabala. And from that special word, Al-Jabr, we get the word algebra. This was the first time anyone had written a book that treated algebra as its own subject. Al Khorizmi took messy, real world problems and turned them into simple puzzles. He called the missing number Shay, which means the thing. Today, we call it X. Then, he created two simple, powerful steps to solve the puzzle. First was Al Jabr, which means completion or fixing. This rule said that if your puzzle had a takeaway part, a negative, you would fix it by adding the same amount to the other side to make it whole again. Second was al muqabala which means balancing. This rule said that if you had the same things on both sides of the puzzle, you could take them away to keep it balanced and make it simpler. With these two simple steps, al khwarizmi created a powerful recipe. It didn't matter what the puzzle was about. If you could turn it into an algebra puzzle, his recipe could solve it. This step-by-step -step recipe for solving problems is the true meaning of an algorithm. The ideas of al Khwarizmi were so powerful that they eventually spread around the world and helped start a new age of science in Europe. But he didn't just work with numbers, he used his genius to map the world itself. The Caliph al-Mamun wanted a new, correct map of the entire world. The best map they had was made by a Greek scholar named Ptolemy, but it was almost 700 years old and had many mistakes. For an empire that traded and traveled across the globe, a bad map was a serious problem. So al khwarizmi was put in charge of a team of geographers. They had a huge job, fix Ptolemy's map. They created a new book called The Image of the Earth. This book wasn't just a map, it was a huge list of the exact locations of over 2,400 cities and places like mountains and rivers. His team didn't just copy old work, they used math and information from travelers to make their map much more accurate. They corrected Ptolemy's mistakes about the size of the Mediterranean Sea and provided the correct locations for important cities like Mecca in modern-day Saudi Arabia. His work laid down the basic ideas for how all maps are made today. This way of thinking, of using clear, step-by-step -step instructions to solve problems, is the legacy of al Khwarizmi. The logic he used for algebra and for mapping the world is the same logic that runs our computers today. The GPS that guides you in a car, it uses a coordinate system, just like the one al Khwarizmi perfected. The computer program that helps you play a game, it's following an algorithm, a recipe he was the first to formalize. His work is the secret code running underneath everything in our modern world. Muhammad ibn Musa al Khwarizmi passed away around the year 850 AD. He was a humble scholar and a man of faith who believed that learning was a sacred duty. He never tried to be famous. He was focused on solving the problems of his time to help the people around him. He would never see a computer or a smartphone. He could never have imagined a world connected by the internet. But it doesn't matter. He created something much more important than any single invention. He gave us a new way to think. He taught us how to solve puzzles, how to find clear answers, and how to build a future based on logic and proof. The tools al Khwarizmi created in the House of Wisdom became the tools we use to build our world today. He didn't just teach us how to find X, he gave us the recipe to write the future. And he encoded it all in his name.